Hello, welcome back Saints Nation to this Thursday evening. My name is Patrick Smoke Chambers and I'm joined by Aiden Silent Ghostomers. And today we have an ECAC Academy game day lineup. We have two matchups right now. We have Fortnite and TFT, also known as Team Fight Tactics. Aiden, it's your first time on the casting desk. You know, glad to have you here. Next week, you know, we'll probably be uh, going over with uh, some Rainbow Six Siege as well. Yeah. But, you know, this week we got Fortnite, we got TFT. How are you feeling, man? Honestly, I'm pretty excited. First time, so honestly, yeah, pretty excited. Yeah, I yeah. always remember, like, just uh, the first cast that I did as well. It was the same exact thing. Yeah. And once you get into those games, man, trust me, it'll just all kind of come together. Oh, yeah. It'll feel awesome. So, for now, though, we have Fortnite and TFT. As a little bit of recap from last week, uh, in terms of Fortnite, you know, we were watching through the eyes of Teo and Unknown. This week, I do know that we are going to be watching through K1's POV. As for his duo's teammate, we have no clue just yet who it is, but we will get that info hopefully shortly. If not, we'll see who it is when you know we go into the server. Mm -hmm. But as far as Fortnite went last week, it was absolutely electric. Uh, Teo and Unknown finishing, I believe, seventh in the first game, first in the second game. They yeah. got that win. And then on the third game, they had a little bit of an early exit. I, I believe 29th was where they placed. I but so, yeah. due to a bunch of gunfights, they did pick up a lot of kills. So hopefully just sort of some uh, consolation points on Especially, that. Yeah, early especially exit. in the second game, Teo had a, a, a hunt, like amazing snipes. Right. I mean, yeah, that was the name of the game, right? Yeah. He was just hitting everything. Oh, yeah. Right? Seriously, yeah. So, it, and then also that four, I believe four or five V1 clutch at the end. Yeah. I mean, it was just absolutely incredible see him working in and out of the builds and everything with that low health, not with me, uh, much heals, and then also his mats running low. Yeah. I mean, it was seriously just everything was looking bad and somehow Teo, you know, he just made the best out of a horrible situation yeah. somehow caught that victory. So, it was an absolutely amazing performance by Teo and Unknown. And in terms of uh, TFT, we are going to still be watching through uh, Tommy or Naku Taiken's, uh eyes, POV. Uh, he, you know, two weeks ago, he was doing really, really good. Last week, a little bit of a little rougher performance. Yeah. Again, you know, fourth place finish, not bad at all by any means. Mm -hmm. Then he had a uh, sixth place finish as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how those leaderboards change. I remember a lot from last week, if I am correct, that he was fourth on those leaderboards. Yeah. Going to wonder to see where he is right now, as well as the rest as uh, Pitsy and Kira as well, see where they're at. Uh, uh, so we do actually have uh, those leaderboards as well. So, you know, we'll see. I'd like to see the Fortnite leaderboard first, personally. Well, okay, never mind. The TFT one, that works too. That works too. So, and there's Pitsy. So he's at number one right now. We know Pitsy's such a high-tier player in TFT. No surprise to see him there at number one. And there's Naku Taiken, of course, Tommy falling to sixth now, but still in the top ten. So, you know, good for him. That's and great. then TFT Kira. So Kira at number 15 as well, sitting on 27 points. And I believe we might have another Saints player just a little lower on the list. We'll see if we can find him. There he is, Prince, at just rounding out, just short of the top 30. But hopefully he moves up those leaderboards this week. Hopefully he does, yeah. And in terms of Fortnite as well, we also have the Fortnite leaderboards as well. If we want to bring to that very quickly, there we are. So looking at the top spots, if we can get it down there. Well, maybe some technical difficulties, but when it does come up, I will say, oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. There it is. So Clark Pride is at the number one spot and by a mile, I might add. In fact, look at the drop off just between first and third. It's absolutely crazy uh, in terms of the same. Let's see if we can find them down, not just quite yet. They might be rounding out somewhere around the top 40. There they are at number 36. I see them right now at eight points. Eight points. So hopefully they catch a couple more points. Kills, of course, I believe being two points each and then placement just adding to that. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do, of course. And, you know, seeing them at eight points, maybe the points format is either A, weekly, or B, does change. So it is going to be interesting to see how those points replicate in the next week. But for now, we know that they are in eighth, just rounding out at 36. And so it's going to be interesting to see what those guys can bring to the table, especially from a different POV in yeah. K1. Yeah. 
And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, there's not really much else to talk about right now. Um, obviously, you know, that is just kind of what is going to be looking like tonight. I believe we are getting me the word that TFT, TFT is, is ready to, start, to go. Yeah. So from the eyes of Naku Taiken, let's see what he can bring to the table. Hopefully a couple of good finishes. Obviously, we know last week he wasn't you know, on that sort of top three area. So it's going to be interesting to see what they pull out here. But as we get into our matchup, it's going to be, let's see the leaderboards. It's Mayas, Shari, Naku Taiken. I believe that's Bucko, uh, Zero, um, Nyctophile, uh, Kmim420, and I don't know what that last yeah, name is. Find, yeah. <laughs> but that's all good. So, yeah, you know, here we, uh, here we go. It's going to be interesting. So, Tommy jumping in to the lineup. Let's see how he opens up. Obviously, he's going to probably start with just a little bit of easy, uh, you know, lineup says it is going to be the minion stage. That mm -hmm. is kind of what happens. We get into the minion stage first, just so that allows the players to sort of build their lineups for those later engagements. So yeah, just sit back, relax, and uh, enjoy. It's going to be a relatively chill stream for tonight. So can't wait to have you on the desk, Aiden. So Right now, we see in the market, it's going to be a bunch of one coin legends that end up popping up. And uh, it is going to uh, just be Tommy who is just going to pick a couple and also play into those synergies on the left hand side. We see that he has two into the Sentinel synergy. So as the minion phase sort of rounds down and as he keeps on going through these rounds, he's just trying to build and build and build his lineup, build those synergies. Right now, when we get into the later stages of the game, I know that uh, the two synergies that people ideally would love to have is Bruiser and Pentakill. And uh, we're going to just see how Tommy builds up his lineup. So another thing that you need to worry about as well is that gold count, ladies and gentlemen, at the bottom, of course, is economy. That marketplace, right? It has a pool of all of those legends. And, you know, when you take... Uh, legends from that pool it also steals them away from other players because it's just a universal pool so as Tommy just kind of looks around sees how everyone else is doing on combat he can kind of get a sort of visual of what other people are kind of playing for what their styles kind of look like and I believe right now that Tommy has also just kind of gone for the super fan guardian and sentinel and now as our first augment stage pops up augments are kind of like just little buffs and you can re-roll them and select which one you want yeah so let's nice. see what he's going to select right now seems like he's probably just going to go for blinged Blink out. out that's going to be exactly what happens here and you can also sell legends back to the stores we just saw tommy did to gain some of that economy back if it's not who you want it to quite build upon now, in terms of what Tommy is most likely looking to do here, he's just, again, like I said, going to be looking around, seeing what other people are building, what lineups they kind of want to build. I actually saw that somebody already has that Bruiser Synergy going down. Yeah, I saw that as well. Yeah, so they're obviously, whoever that is, is off to what you would assume is a great start. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens here as we get into the just first another battle, round yeah. of combat. Seems like Tommy's front line is probably not doing the greatest. He does have that one backline legend, though, doing damage. Gotta wonder if maybe he's going to make it out of this one. Probably not as his first legend falls. Should be the next legend in the front line to go. However, this backline legend is putting up some good damage. It's just he's going to get trounced when those guys up front start moving up. That's going to be exactly what happens. And it should be Naku Taiken taking a little bit of damage. As you see, 6 now down to 94 on the, on the health pool of Naku Taiken. Wonder how he's gonna build his lineup now. Is he's just gonna try to kind of look around, sell. He has eight coins, and also as well to mention, you know, just because you lose the battle doesn't mean you've lost the war. When you do lose, you do get a little bit of bonus gold, and you can build up interest to kind of earn more gold as the rounds do go. So it's going to be interesting to see sometimes players strategically trying to farm gold early. So it will be interesting to see how uh, Tommy builds this lineup. His front line seems to be holding up 
quite okay to start, and I believe they have found the first pick. And now it's just going to be, actually, you know what? I was going to say it was holding up quite well, but that backline legend that Nyctophile has right now is kind of shredding away. But it as is, the front line does yeah. fall, it should be Tommy just taking this engagement as well. So very comfortable start right now for Nakutaiken. And it's going to be interesting to see across the board how everybody else is doing. Nice little win there on the back for Tommy. As we look at the store, we see that Tommy does have 15 gold. Now, another thing that you can do is you can reroll the shop for two gold, or you could also buy XP to level up. So, again, it is kind of uh, interesting to see how these players do choose to spend that gold. But early game right now, I doubt that Tommy is going to do anything really of that caliber. He's probably just going to look to kind of build up, to build it up his, yeah. his army exactly and probably earn some tier two heroes soon. Again, uh, something in TFT that I do know is that when you have two multiple heroes of the same kind, you can merge them to make a stronger version of themselves. So one person who I know that is really good, especially almost unstoppable when you get them to tier three, is Jinx. We saw Naku Taiken about two weeks ago utilizing that tier 3 Jinx. I was on the desk with Gabriel when we were casting that and the second he got a character like that tier 3, he was just absolutely ripping apart the competition. It wasn't even close. And now we go to my favorite part of the entire uh, <laughs> of, of TFT and it's the carousel. So here based on how the order goes of who's first to worst, worst goes first, best goes last, you get to choose a legend who also has an item equipped to them so sometimes it's a little bit weird how the strategy works usually uh first carousel around you would expect that people are just going to look to take the best legend available yeah. the best unit available but in those later rounds sometimes an item can really really enhance one of your units so it's not that uncommon that you see some players maybe shy away from some of those better legends if you know that you can grab a unit off the carousel that has an item that can really elevate the performance of your lineup. And then it also goes another way that you could steal someone or an item that you know someone needs in order to enhance their lineup. And that's something that Tommy can do as he's sort of spectating the other players, spectating what they have, what synergies they're playing into. You can really see and sort of get a feel for what items they need mm -hmm. for a player like Nakutai can not hard to figure out. So then come the carousel, he can kind of see, okay, what do I want to do? Do I want to build up my own? Do I want to steal? And that is why I love the carousel so much. It's just kind of fun. In this next fight, frontline falling quite uh, yeah. quickly. Zero with an absolutely awesome lineup so far. And I would say has a very strong beginning start. And it would assume so, I would assume so, and it would appear so. A zero has 96 health still. Must bring up the fact that Shari also has not lost an engagement yet. So very hot start. 24 gold now on for Nakutaik. And it's going to be interesting to see how he spends this, if he's even willing to spend it. Maybe he's just looking to farm up Econ, but let's look at the synergies right now. He's looking to kind of tap into Guardian, Superfan, Rapid Fire, and True Damage. And as you can see as well, ladies and gentlemen, when he does get another legend, for example, or unit in Superfan, two more in Guardian, you can up it to another tier, that synergy to another tier. So you can see that in Superfan, if you get five units that run that Superfan synergy, you can get it to that third level of the synergy. And it, and does, it does come with fall, a bonus. It does come with a bonus. Yes, they well, all right? do little. Yeah. Yes, they all synergies always do little buffs and everything, but they are only activated if you have people of the same synergy on your lineup. Yeah. Pretty clean win and a pretty dominant one as well as the front line for the opposing player just kind of fell very early. So Nakutai can now just kind of sitting back chilling. <clears throat> he has some good economy that he can use now if he feels like he wants to, but he might just kind of relax here and again continue to save. Maybe looking to buy some XP as well. Who knows? But for now, I think that Tommy is in a pretty, pretty comfortable spot. He just needs to kind of keep farming. And if he can start getting a couple of uh, more wins on these engagements on players, it might turn out good for him. What he needs 
needs to worry about, though, is he didn't get off to quite the hottest start. So he just has to be mindful of the fact that if he takes too many losses, it will come back to bite him in the future, already down to 88. So it's not the worst, but it's not the best. It's just kind of in that middle, in that, that mid-ground, yeah. right? So Tommy just looking probably to play it safe. And with 61 gold now in the bank, I almost would assume that he is going to look to use it on something. It seems that we are going to see him buy it, spend it on XP, getting himself to level 5, just so he can have 5 units on the board as well. And let's kick it over to some Fortnite as well. So, we see our players have dropped in, and I mean, Fortnite's such an entertaining game. In the early stages, yes, it is a little bit boring, as it is mostly just mats farming and, of course, ammo farming as well. But... Let's see who we have on our players. I believe it's K1, and I think... I can't quite see the name of the other player, but I think I see Zero as the second part of his name, so I'm just going to call him Zero for now. If I'm wrong, I apologize. But so far, K1 and Zero, I believe they do have sights on an pl enemy player. Yes, they do. Should be the quick elimination, and that is going to be a free two points on the board from K1. And again, obviously, you know, they are just farming up the mats here. So not too much action, except for the fact that they are going to see the footsteps and they are going to know about the player. He has been found out down below. And now it's going to be interesting to see if K1 and Zero can just quickly convert and maybe grab themselves yet another two free points. Looking to get aggressive, obviously. No one wants to really go down on this early stage. So you have to assume that this enemy player is just trying to get out of dodge rather than take a fight unless it is a new duo. It is going to be the knock coming in. What a shot through the air through K1. And that is going to actually be another down. duo. So it is going to be Zero who is down. And does the enemy player know about K1? Well, before he took that 61 of the shield, he didn't. But now he certainly does. And now K1, in a little bit of a weird predicament, grabs the reboot card as the finish does come through. And he has to be very careful. The Saints could be eyeing an early exit here. Launching that homing launcher now, just trying to kind of evade by time and honestly what I would assume is get out of dodge. Maybe looking for the confirm on the knock that he had earlier, but now K1 just has to play it smart, has to play it safe. 81, oh, 81. shield, and now just probably looking to get aggressive. He does have the shield advantage, so you would assume that so far if they can just try to, you know, keep moving around, get into these boxes, evade the player from healing, grab the elimination, it is going to be K1 to do just that. The player trying to box up, trying to get those heals. K1 knows better, knows exactly where the player is, finds the quick pickup, and gets another two points for the Saints. Probably going to hit that reboot van now to get his teammate back too. And it's very fortunate for the reboot van to be there, because usually a lot of players are not tend to stick away from that, because it does when, when, it, when rebooting other teammates, it has like a really no uh, high noise level. Right, so and I mean, exactly. When you're at this level of Fortnite as well, right, like even just sitting on a reboot van, not, you know, boxed up or anything, could be your undoing. A lot of these teams, you know, they do look at that minimap a lot. They know where all the reboot reboots are. I'm sure a couple of teams definitely just heard that reboot go off anyway, but it is probably in their best interest not to push just yet. In case that they end up giving up their lives, it is going to be an early exit that no one wants, especially at this level of gameplay. Exactly. People usually want to stay around for that final circle with all of their mats saved up and ammo saved up, leveled up guns. You want to take your time, not be aggressive, and have that down stat so when it does come to that late game, you have a lot of utility to burn. And what I will say right now is, as this is only the first circle to come in, I believe that there is only 50 or 61 players remaining a very very low number uh surprisingly i guess a kind of aggressive lobby that we've been put in and i mean it's been shown on the Saints side too they already have three eliminations so six points on the board if they do count for two unless the point system has been changed so you have to assume a pretty decent start so far for st Clair. for sure yeah and i'm interested to see if they were going to be utilizing the movement that they had last time that they played the movement that they had was incredible. It was quick and easy. Uh, what was it called? The Flowberry um, 
Fizz, I believe it's called. Yes, so they would pop the flow berry and then they would be essentially just impulse grenade out of there. Yeah. And they did this as a lot of the time when they were trying to just find that next rotation on Storm. Now, last week we did see that our team, of course, not, not the same team, but our team last week with Teo, they uh, used the weather, uh, I believe a weather beacon basically, to just kind of show them where that next Storm was going to pop up. Yeah. So they had quite the advantage did, uh, yeah. going in. I believe that was the game that they won too. So it makes sense as they kind of always had the one up on rotation for a lot of these other teams. So you would usually see them using that grapple hook or impulse grenades, quickly trying to rotate and just being able to have that positioning was most likely what did end up helping Teo grab that win last week as they farm up more mats here. St. Clair just taking it slow, taking it nice, taking it easy. No reason to rush. They do have to move soon, I believe, in 50 seconds. But Again, that storm is not going to be a problem as it is only the second storm. I believe you can even sprint faster than it uh, I so, yes. right now as it is only that second storm. So nothing that our Saints have to worry about. They're just going to get to farming more mats. For mats, and he still has collected all those shockwave or impulses too as well. I, sh I believe they could mainly go for a grapple hook though because I believe that's like a really good way to maintain and uh, for movement and rotation. Right. And I mean, I'm not surprised here to see this kind of commitment. People may be saying, well, he is in the storm. That's not, you know, that's less than ideal. But with a launch pad right there, it's going to pose no threat as K1 can just get out of dodge. And it's going to be almost as if he was completely unfazed, utilizing the fish as well, just to gain back some of that HP. So it's going to be the rotation coming in now as the second storm does make its way in. It'll be interesting to see how those Saints players are going to position themselves. Back on the side of TFT as well, it is going to be Tommy, who I believe now sits fourth. Oh, uh, looks like fourth, he but it looks like, you know, with 100 health, did Tommy get eliminated early? It could be that, unless I'm seeing that wrong, but maybe a early elimination for Tommy here could have been the case. We were in Fortnite for a little while. So the first game I'm hearing did actually end really, really early. Tommy did take an early loss. I'm not necessarily, you know, I am surprised, honestly, because Tommy is such a great player on TFT, but he did not have the greatest start. And yeah. I mean, we did see that some of those lineups, especially the guy who was in second who he was facing, absolutely just obliterated his front line. Exactly, so yeah. So it's going to kind of be, I guess, sort of that trap that Tommy was thrown into. And after you take a lot of those engagements, you are going to lose health. But a very fast first exit for Tommy. Very surprised as we get into our second game of TFT. Just like you said earlier, it's, it's good for farming, but at the exact same time, there is a cost to it. Of course. And that's kind of what happens when you build into multiple synergies, especially when we get into sort of like those three, four synergies. If you are not, a lot of people, they kind of like to go early into one. And I can actually see that I'm pretty sure Tommy already has that second tier bruiser synergy. So a lot more of a direct setup from him this time, not looking to dabble in certain synergies left, right, and center. It was like he had four synergies active exactly, that last yeah. game, but he had a little bit of everything, but it didn't end up working. So now he's really trying to lock down that bruiser synergy. He already has it at second tier. Going to be interesting to see how that game works out for him. And looking back on Fortnite, we do have an engagement now on the top of this hill. It is going to be the Saints with the lower ground. Snipe does hey, come in. It's again. going to be the 100, and it's going to be finished off, I believe, from the other player. K1 with a beautiful snipe to open up engagement. And now as we get it back, we can try to see if these Saints can capitalize, find that second teammate, and just quickly try to see if they can find those next two points. Really good, though, on the side of St. Clair's. They do have four eliminations as a group. The player spotted, and now they know exactly where they have to rotate to. You can assume that they're probably headed to some sort of cover. Actually, a huge fight going down, and that's oh. going to be the knock as well. 105, Saints looking to push. Impulse grenade coming out, and as the box comes through, it's going to be our players to just try to see if they can play cleanup crew third party here. And as they try to take the lower ground, just dabbling in between, trying to figure out where these players are boxed in, trying to figure out which one they should take the engagement on, going to quickly loot up, maybe find the confirm. That's going to be exactly what they do. A free two points, and they can just try to farm up more mats, farm up more ammo before they take this next engagement very shortly. And the Saints right now just trying to box up, seeing maybe if they can just try to 
have a little bit of a base working for them. Probably just trying to throw off some of the attackers as well, if there are any. I do believe that the other squad did kind of dip out, so I don't believe that they're there anymore. I think that St. Clair are relatively safe based on the positioning right now and the fact that I'm not seeing any more sound markers around them as well. So I think St. Clair are safe from that engagement, but... As the storm closes in, you have to start thinking about where you want to move out of fencing fields. So it's going to be interesting to see how the Saints play this. But nevertheless, still off to a good start in this first game. For sure, for sure. It is going to be uh, K1. They're just trying to be patient here, honestly. Nothing nothing too, you know, crazy. <clears throat> the storm is right behind them, so they are going to have to move. But that shouldn't be a very big problem for K1 using those side just to just get that aerial dash. Probably trying to get some positioning as well. If those other players were around them, they will have to rotate to them soon. I believe the Saints do kind of spot another engagement and yeah, they're probably just trying to backtrack, making sure that they're not being followed here. I think they see sort of a second engagement, probably looking to just avoid it right now. They are a little more worried about positioning, so I believe they will try to fight for the positioning just on that high ground. It's going to be exactly what happens as they try to get themselves into this next storm. And I gotta wonder now that they have this, are they going to just sit on this high ground, ride the storm in, or are they going to get aggressive and try to kind of get into these other buildings, try to get a little more late game loot? Seems like we're gonna find our answer right here, going to go into those buildings now, trying to probably see if they can try to level up some guns, going to be that vending machine that they are just trying to grab some resources from real quick. I believe with that storm closing in, they should almost be there. It is going to be the updraft just taking them up, trying to get that high ground. I believe they have marked a rift that they do want to hit, but I don't know necessarily. I think those... That's going to be a loot island, I believe. Should yes. Spawn in about in a couple minutes or a minute. So do you think right now that our Saints are, you know, kind of looking for this loot island in terms of, like, uh, eliminations, maybe trying to bait in people, especially with a long-range lineup? You kind of want to do keep your engagements at a longer range just so you can have that sniper to open up the entry and then push in off of a knock or a 105 body shot. So would you think that right now, Aiden, based on what we're seeing, do you know that they have the loot island pinged out? Do you think they're really going to try to go for this, or do you think they're going to try to stay back, play safe, and they're going to try to, they're just going to try to snipe it out? What do you think? Well, I would assume that they would go t towards the the uh, loot lake or loot uh, building, is because it's high ground, and with the sniper, that would that's key. The thing is, though, going up there, it does cause a lot of attention, and other squads will probably go up there for the loot as well. So, so there's pros and cons to both. Yeah, there's pros and cons to both of them. Well, we're gonna but see how looks, St. Clair plays it. Yeah, out. it looks like he is making his way towards it. And right now, you know, let's kind of touch on the man count. I believe 31 players left, as I just saw two eliminations go down in the bottom left. And just for you guys wondering as well, uh, you know, these are player POVs, but. If you do want to access these other streams as well, if you do not want to hear me and Aiden's commentary, feel free to just press exclamation mark streams in the chat, and that should pop up those other stream links if you want to just see pure raw gameplay, as we do know that second TFT game is underway right now as well. Again, very quick exit for Tommy on that first game. Going to see if uh, that gets back. And we are actually going to see uh, or get word that uh, the last lobby actually that Tommy was in actually had an error. So it wasn't actually an early elimination. I was told that it was an early elimination earlier, mm -hmm. but that is not going to be the case, thankfully. So Tommy going into that bruiser, uh, you know, tier two synergy, it is going to be game one for him. So maybe a little bit of redemption knows kind of what these other players like to play into from last game. Maybe a little bit of a, you know, slight upper hand for However, Tommy. However, we'll it see. does look like he has fallen down. 84 health. Ouch. Not the best start then for uh, Naku Taiken as he gets in the lobby. Of course, it was a very hard lobby. It was the same start sort of that we see from, uh, you know, the original lobby that had the air, right? Yeah. Getting down to 88 almost immediately. Yeah, exactly. So, it's just going to be Tommy that just needs to try to play it patient, play it safe. It seems like he's having sort of a tough start in the beginning of these early game stages. Hopefully, 
he gets the augments and the synergies and the items he needs to just try to, you know, help his lineup out. And it'll be interesting. It's still early game, so anything can happen, but obviously, you know, you'd rather be sitting up on the top of the leaderboard with 100 health than down on the bottom with 84. Exactly, yeah. Looking on the bottom left as well, you can see our Saints now. The circle is getting slimmer and slimmer. You can tell that now mats mean a whole lot more. All these players are looking to probably farm up as much brick and metal as they can, and especially wood. Just because when we get into that late round game, since it is build mode, we're eventually going to see just a huge tower or just a bunch of structures just on top of each other. And then it simply just kind of becomes a match of whoever uses their mats the most effectively probably ends up taking it. For sure. So yeah. it's most likely going to be uh, coming down to that result as we see St. Clair just opting to kind of play it safe, boxing in right now, not trying to give themselves away or give themselves up to anything too big. For sure, yeah. And for from what it looks like as of right now, they are right underneath the loot island. So I wonder if they are kind of baiting other players, waiting for players to come by. And it wouldn't surprise me at all because when they do have that little high ground of the structure before the loot island comes through, they can probably try to find a snipe. Although it does kind of seem like they're trying to bunker in and build a little bit of a base. I mean, probably just to kind of find a little bit of vision there. We see just holding off on the edit is K1 just so he can kind of see through that trans... Uh, lucent mat and just be able to just find uh, the uh, other players For sure, because yeah. of course you know when you hold when you're not editing that mac is opaque so you cannot Locking see through view, it yeah. right so when you do hit that edit ladies and gentlemen for you that don't understand what's going on but don't actually oh, finish like an edit, engagement started. they can see where those other teams are and yes as Aiden has pointed out the Saints have spotted an engagement you gotta wonder if they're just going to try to quickly hit the snipe and then go back in it's going to be exactly what K1 does but the snipe just barely missing the mark you gotta think he's gonna try to go for it again if the opportunity presents itself he would definitely yeah he definitely will especially with last uh last game that he had last week but those sniping skills were amazing i believe that was teo not k1 but was it yeah yeah but what i will say is you know these players are capable of the exact same thing so i don't blame you for saying that it's going to be exactly what happens in fact the enemy player getting a little bit aggressive i think finding uh, a little bit of room to get in close he's going to end up taking the engagement and now this is going to be the rift that comes out the teammate in zero actually going down not a very ideal way to end off this mid game if you are the saints couple of people hitting that rift as well wonder if k1's going to elect to follow a duo here as he just sees some to his left or if he is just trying to get the quick rotation to that circle it's going to be exactly just that but it's such a vast flat land right now that he's trying to land on i really wonder if this is the right move it's going to be a really risky one as everything is just sort of eye level there's not really much cover outside of this bush that he is hiding in right now and it's going to be a probably a very risky game especially because of the rotation you just made yeah you can imagine picking up your teammates reboot card and hitting a van this late into the game definitely out of the question not going to happen so right now he's probably just electing to kind of rat and hide playing for placement that's pretty much the only thing he can do unless he could pick off a few eliminations but however with the situation that he's in just like you said earlier it is quite flat and from what it looks like all around him, there is combats. Ryan, we do see the player going down in the bottom left. So that will dwindle our man count down to, I believe, the top 30. So far combined, five eliminations for the Saints and four for K1 as he sees the player just ziplining by. So it is going to be exactly how Aiden predicted. We're just, we are ratting right now. We're just trying to see if we can find a couple of picks, try to find positioning. But it's going to be a little awkward. The miss snipe there from K1. Going to find a tag for 28. And I don't believe the player exactly knows where he was hit from. So a little bit of a cheeky play there from K1. And he's going to have to keep on trying these cheeky plays if he wants to find a pick or two. However, if you let too many snipes go through that same area, people will start to put the tracers together. And they'll start to kind of realize what exactly is going on. He has the eyes on the player. Going to oh, have 263, 263. And he gets the down as well. Can he find the elimination? 
No, not quite. But he's just going to just kind of pepper and pepper and pepper. We have to hope that he can hit another there shot. There we go. The another elimination. elimination. Free two points. And now on a storm rotation that is most likely going to spell death unless something really weird happens. The 105, 105 and the other player too. So K1 absolutely hitting his snipes. You know, not Tim Teo from last week, but he is on the same caliber, honestly. He's hitting these shots and he is, you know, making his opportunities matter. So close to finding the headshot on the player above him as well. Maybe trying to find that other player boxed in. This is going to be a very dangerous engagement though, as he is prone now to any shots hitting him through the air, just hopping in the water, trying to get down, trying to see if he can build up and just take cover. But this is a bad position to be in, as literally everywhere around you has high ground advantage. And with the sniper, you never want to be the one shooting upwards. For sure, for sure. However, he does have those uh, those mythic... So for rotation, he could get out. Yeah, the edit coming through. Can he find the snipe? Yes, 105. Sadly, just not the headshot that he needed. But it is okay. Damage is damage. That player most likely going to have to box up and waste a couple of those heals that they have left just to get themselves back up to full shield, which really is the name of the game. You don't necessarily have to eliminate someone or injure them to have a mass effect on how the game works out. That player obviously now down heals. And this late in the game, most likely, other than an elimination, not going to be able to pick up any more heals at this stage so every little hit every bit of damage especially a bulk chunk 105 shot from a sniper really does matter in the long scheme in the long term so it is going to be um k1 hopping in the car trying to see if he can just get out just drive under that mat going for hopefully the try to find the oh. player he is trying to find them but it is actually going to be the hop out now playing a little bit of ring around the rosy on the car now just trying to play up and trying to rotate again. He is under a lot of duress, though, and under a lot of fire. As you see, he kind of landed himself into a chaotic situation with players all in, dire all in directions. Yeah, and right now, Aiden, you know, you really do wonder how long does, does K1 have to live here? Especially with this, especially with the situation he's in, and... How many players? 20 players, I believe, that are still alive. It does. It's not looking great, but he can still pull off a good few eliminations to kind of get that placement up. Look at all, look at all the boots just around <laughs> on the sound field. I mean, everyone is just all over him right now. So they just have to, he just has to kind of wait this one out. Shots coming through everywhere. You can't even commentate where they are at this point. There's just gunfire happening all around. Everyone just trying to fight for mats and trying to fight for meds. You know, getting a pick here or there. I believe it has dwindled down now to the final 18? Yes, that is going to be right. 17 now is two as I believe a confirm on the other pick comes through and that storm just threatening a little bit. But however, it seems that K1 has a very good plan of rotation. He is going to box up here and get the high ground with the metal mats as well. Doubt that too many players are going to want to challenge that. But it is going to kind of limit his mats. We do see that he has, I believe, 374 wood. And, and 270 200, for steel. Yeah, 270 for steel. So with a combined 37 mats and uh, 27 mats of steel that he can put down, 37 mats of wood, it is going to get a little bit limited here, finding players all around. You're just trying to box up right now if you're K1 and try to stall as much time as possible without dying. For, for sure, for sure. And as you can see, that circle is getting smaller. And I can't believe there's still, look at that, 12 players alive now. Well, you know what? For a round that started, I believe, the top 30 that wasn't looking too good. I mean, K1 has been doing such an amazing job. I mean, what, this for is sure, just yeah. absolute madness. I don't know how he's still staying alive despite all of the engagement that's going on. Just trying to get some air, trying to find if he can get some high ground off of the lip of that mountain. And now, K1. You have a decent position here, but there's not really much you can do. And with a couple of players even getting above you here, are you going to look to build up to their level? Maybe. You're going to take a lot of damage for it, though. And now with only about 11 shield left, as that number is going up, he is healing. There is not a lot you can do in this position. You kind of have to find any high ground you can. That is going to be a very aggressive rotation. And now he has to take the fight. Not going to work out in his favor. The edit just coming in from the enemy player. A sixth place finish 
from the St. Clair Saints in their first game. That's not, not too bad. shabby, yeah. if I do say so myself. I believe they had six elimination, five or six eliminations in total as well. Yeah, I believe five was the final number. But now as we get into some TFT, let's see what is going on. Ooh, Nakutaiken not doing too good. He sits last currently, actually, with 42 health on his board. We can see that he is tuning into that Jazz synergy at the second level. And I mean, oh my lord, he's doing exactly what he was doing the first game. So he's just tapping into a little bit of everything. Yeah. But you do wonder right now, with the result that he's been seeing, you wonder, is this just a really, really, really strong lobby? Or is this just not the best strat that is going down right now as he is playing into, I believe, one, two, three, four, seven synergies right now. I mean, that is just all over the place. So we'll have to see what happens here. But as the front line does crumble for the opposition, I think that they could be in a relatively good scenario here. The team fight looks to not be going the way of the enemy. Yes, it and is. Naku Taiken is going to be able to chip some of that health down, moving into now from last up two spots into sixth. So a very good job so far from Tommy. And I believe he's going to move up actually again as that other player above him at 43 HP did lose out. So he is going to move up now to fifth. So just kind of showing just how fast TFT can work out. And now Tommy's turn on the carousel has to be coming up soon. Elects to make his choice. And now he will hopefully have a stronger lineup or playing for the item. I believe he would probably be playing for the item, I believe, as well. And yeah, I, well, I wonder what he's doing with all those, um, with all those different types of energies. Just like last game, just like the first game that we saw, although it was an error, it he had a, a lot, good variety, and unfortunately didn't really work out for him. So I believe what Tommy's mainly trying to do is instead of kind of looping a bunch of people into one synergy, he just kind of wants to have a little bit of everything going across the board. Maybe he has a unit on the board that, you know, benefits from more synergies being active on the field. Yeah. Who knows? But what we do know is that, and oh my gosh, I think we just <laughs> saw someone else when Tommy was spectating who literally played into like, I think even more synergies than he did. So it's interesting, you know, there are different ways that you can kind of form strategy and tapping into a bunch of different synergies. Some Sometimes is the move to make, but from what I've seen so far in this meta, again, you know, chat, correct me, Twitch chat, correct me if I'm wrong, but right now the kind of big lineup to go into is that Bruiser Pentakill lineup, and uh, yeah, we are seeing that Tommy is do having a good time here. He has gotten through the front line, is going to get through the back line. And Tommy might just make me eat my own words because so far, so good. He is doing nicely as he now finds himself in fourth place. However, you look on the board, look at the drop off from first place to second place. I mean, 93 health to 56. You almost have to assume that the player in first will almost definitely take it. I am not caster cursing on, on purpose, I promise you. <laughs> Yeah, but for sure, it is a drastic drop in, in health-wise. Yeah. I'm just interested if Tommy can make his way back up. And I probably right. know, I know he could, he know, I know he could, it's just, it is going to be an interesting game, though. Well, it just depends, right? I mean, there are so many different factors that go into what makes a good TFT game. So, you know, it is going to be a lot of these factors that you do see come into play, determining whether he has a great match, an okay match, or a poor match. But so far, it looks like it's going pretty good, as I do say that the front line is going to be taken down on this engagement. However, the comeback, I thought the front line was taken down by Tom, uh, from Tommy, but they are actually going to rebound and find the win on that engagement as well. So very good job so far from Naku Taiken, just holding that ground as he does remain in fourth place. Level seven as well, so he can put seven units on the board now. And he is just trying to build and build and build, probably making some of those characters on his board a little bit better. Maybe playing into that Jazz synergy a little more. Yeah. We'll see if he wants to choose to try to build that up to Tier 3, getting another Jazz player on that board. But as the engagement comes through now, we just have to sit back and wait. And this is going to be, I believe, a minion round. So it will just be some free loot. There we go. He gets to uh, ch uh, choose another item to take. And see so it goes with. Yeah, we will see what he goes with. But anyway, he is going to have 18 more seconds to choose whatever item he wants just for fun. And now uh, use that to try to get back up on the board. We still Spot notice that 
I believe if we look down at the bottom, that last player, Buxo, on 15 HP, followed up by MM Hooks, is also on 19. A couple of players really, really low, and actually kind of a decent drop-off right now from Tommy's position to fifth. For sure. As we see from 42 to 26, we can sort of see now kind of where this match is kind of going, what direction it's heading into. We can almost sort of imagine that unless barring a massive fall-off here, Tommy should be able to you know, sustain a fourth, pl a top four finish. So hopefully that kind of keeps up. But as we do see Shari streaking now, as the game tag is on fire, it's going to be hard to move up into that top three, as I'm sure the lineup looking very strong for those opponents. But now knocking down that other player, I believe that was zero who he just beat. So look at that, the bottom four on 10 or less health, most of them don't even have the uh, the chance to give up another one of these engagements. You should start to see after this next player v player engagement, a lot of people start to kind of fall off the map. For sure, at least four people dropping off. Right, and uh, I mean, you know, I think Zero might be able to sustain another loss, but I don't quite know about the other players as Briar Patchy, MM Hooks, and Buxo are looking very, very, very poor in terms of the health department. As we do look at this engagement right now, though, the front line holding up pretty okay. However, a massive drop-off in terms of health. The front line is actually going to take the worst end of that damage, but the back line is so absolutely strong. And Did I think I'm that. sort of getting a little bit of an idea of where Tommy's going with this. He has a lot of those synergies in the front line, I believe, just kind of as those little buffers to kind of help a back line. So I believe he's just trying to build his front line to kind of be at like kind of a mid-level in terms of strength, but the power comes from the back line. So the name of the game now is how can Tommy build up his front line to buy his back line players time to pick off the other enemies? Mm -hmm. So he is investing, I believe, heavily in the back line. And now with the switch up, with his front line being a little bit underpowered, he's just going to start to build up his front line, see if they can just allow that time for the back line units to do their job. As we do see, I believe, yep. Boom, there you go. Three players immediately eliminated as well from that round. So, no matter what, Tommy will be able to secure a top five finish. And with MM Hooks at five health, you have to assume that top four is coming soon. For sure, for sure. And however, the top three players, Tommy included, are both, all three of them are already in the 40s. So it could play a very close. He could end up going into either top three or top two. Right. I mean, any of these engagements are just so huge, but it seems like it is going to be Nakutaiken taking the blunt end of the damage. And I mean, oh my gosh, going from 42 health down to 28. That was an absolutely ca catastrophic, massive loss there. MM Hooks staying on the board as well. I was kind of confident that this was going to be a little more of a closer matchup and that Tommy had a little more time to chew with. But it does seem like he needs to get going quick. This has now come from a kind of relaxing game and kind of like, okay, I can kind of take my time here. I'm looking good. And now all of a sudden, he is on Death's Door's watch. He can kind of see the Reaper looking at him. So he needs to kind of, you know... Tense up a little bit. He's got to he's gotta lock in. So we'll see what Nakutaiken can do. 30 gold right now in economy. See how he wants to spend it. If he just wants to save up for XP. But at the same time with 30 gold, you're not going to get that level 9 just yet. So that level 8 is going to be what ends up happening. And now we are going to see the engagement most likely coming in very shortly. Here we go. Combat starts up. Who is he against? He's against it's Mies. So it's going to be the player in second place. And this is going to be very interesting to see how this plays out. The front line, I believe, is getting peppered quite a bit. And that is a massive unit that just tried to get into the back line. But it is dead However, now. it does look like Tommy he is. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, he's moving him back. And I believe he's going to take this engagement. Uh, yeah, and he does. 
Right, so moving himself now up into second place and a huge loss as well for Nyctophile, who is now off, I believe, just lost about 14 HP. I can't quite remember, but I th yeah, because I think he was on about 93, so that does seem right. So, you know what? Right now, Tommy looking pretty good may get that second place finish. He locked in, he won that engagement, and everybody who lost needed to lose for him to move up. Yeah. Well played by Nakutaiken. For sure, for sure. And he still needs to maintain this, though, because even one loss can change it. Of course, especially with those top four players being so close in health. I mean, you see Mias on the 22 as well. This is going to be a good gauge, though, to see how that first player is, uh, player in first place is doing. And it does seem like uh, that Tommy, well, was having a good time he actually oh. is you know it should it maybe go down maybe, maybe it's going to be a nice. matter of health no not quite a very close finish for tommy and he is going to bite off about nine hp for his efforts very close though and you know what with that in mind with both of their lineups being so close together i would be very surprised to see tommy fall anywhere short of second now just off of what i saw there yeah for sure for sure you have to assume with the next matchup that goes down that he is going to pick up the elimination on someone. It is going to just be a uh, minion round right now as the Hermit does come through. I call it the Thanos Crab, but that's just me. <laughs> it's purple and it's a crab. But uh, yeah, it's going to be Nakutaiken picking up the kill there, which, you know, everyone expected. But a free item as well once you do take down those bosses. And now you can just kind of see what does Tommy want to take there it is and he is going to use that now to fuel his team and what level is he at right now eight does he want to buy xp no not quite just selling stuff back to the shop he has a lot of uh gold to use now and yep that's going to be exactly what happens he is going to build up that xp he was just selling stuff back to the store so he could get those coins to get up to level nine yeah now being able to place a ninth unit on the board we will see how this goes down. I don't exactly know who he's facing off against just yet, but the reveal will come in shortly, soon enough. The front line doing a very good job so far. Units all across the board from Tommy looking good, but all of a sudden, a huge comeback. Not quite. Never mind. It looked okay for the enemy player at one point in time, but it is going to be, I believe, Tommy with the finish there. Yes, and I believe they're just showing the other player getting eliminated. So it's going to be, it's me, it's gone off the board. So a top three finish secured for Nakutaiken. Very, very good. Already beating out the two finishes that he had last week. So a very strong showing from Tommy so far. For sure. And I feel like move, uh, moving up to level nine and adding that one other guy for front lines kind of helped him out. Because I feel like Tommy's main, like, like contribute to his team are those back players. Right, it's all on the back line right now. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like having that one extra guy on the front lines, it really did help him with that last round. Absolutely. And as he goes up against Shari here, it's going to be interesting to see. This is such an important fight. Both players, this will decide who stays in second. The front line from Tommy getting absolutely crushed. Can the back line recover? They are going to find the picks they need necessary to keep this fight up. It should be the win and it does. for Nakutaik. And that back line is just so unbelievable. And now with Tommy putting Shari down onto three health. The playing stage will come through, but you have to assume right now that Nakutaiken and Tommy is doing just good enough to hopefully secure a top two finish. Mm -hmm. He needs to be careful here though with 19, 19 health. Right, I mean, Although the third place is with thir uh, is with 3% uh, health, it does look like he is going to be coming in with that top se uh, second. Right, but I mean, I, I almost see it impossible. I mean, Nyctophile is already on seven, well, 79, 79 health yes. right now. I mean, it's just unbelievable the work that is being put in. We'll see how Tommy's lineup fares against it. The front line looks a little weak right now, but the back line doing their work necessary to kind of pick up the slack. 
However, with the units going across the board, it is actually going to be a huge resurgence from the back line. They might sort of have this in the bag. They are actually going that, to eh? a huge win for Nakutaikin, bumping down Nyctophile at 62 HP total. And now with the carousel and three players going, it's going to be a relatively important pick right now for Tommy to see what they can use for, or sorry, see what he can use for his lineup. And I do believe that if we look at the, uh, yeah, if we look at the synergies right now, Tommy has played into that third tier jazz synergy. So that's going to be what he's rocking. I mean, so many other synergies as well, just upping the total to eight now. Uh, he's just kind of all over the place, but For it sure. seems to be working at least to working. enough to the point where he can get a second place finish. So as the planning phase almost goes down, the combat will happen soon. Seems like Tommy is relatively content with his lineup. Only 23 gold, not really much that he is going to be burning it on. There's no really point to use any of it right now. So it's going to be the engagement that comes in. This is going to mean a lot right now, as I do believe it is Shari, who he is up against, that is right. So, the front line is falling kind of quickly, though. Whoa. And wow, that is an absolutely insane push out from the opponent. However, with the units falling down, you maybe thought that Tommy had a little bit of a chance. Not anymore. Although, I do think that it was actually uh, just an AI, I believe, who he was going up against. Because it seems that Shari has been eliminated. So, in the fight with Nick Defile going down. So it is going to be Tommy securing a top two finish. Yes, it is, yeah. But I have absolutely no clue how he's going to string together enough victories. You can tell he's wasting all of that uh, economy right now, just trying to see if he can find anything in the market that he likes. But with it running slim, I don't think it's going to quite happen. Yeah. Doesn't really find anything. This is probably going to be it, but we will see if Tommy can make a stand. Well, I mean, the damage number is looking actually pretty high right now on the side for Nakutaik, and even with the enemies pushing up, however, wow, oh. the damage just absolutely overwhelms Tommy. You can tell this one is going to be all she wrote very soon. Nevertheless, though, Tommy going down will secure the second, second place, place finish. Yep. Not too shabby. Very, very good job by Tommy. And as we get into some more Fortnite, let's see how our Saints, after finishing sixth, will be able to get back into the swing of things. Now, it looks like they landed at the last... Yeah, it looks like they landed in the exact same place as last game as well. It did work out for them. However, his teammate did end up dying last round. So hopefully both of them can, st can stay alive this time and get that victory royale. Right, I mean, Fortnite, just such a calm game. I mean, the start, right, just farming up all those mats, just trying to find any loot that they can to start out, stuff to look to upgrade. But so far, if I had to judge the performance of K1 and Zero, it's been pretty good. Zero has died early a couple of times. But K1's been able to pick up the slack, nevertheless, for sure. He's been doing great. And I mean, he would, just like uh, Teo from last week, I mean, K1 was just hitting every snipe that he was honestly firing. He was, yeah. Very efficient with that sniper in his hands. And you got to hope that just for entertainment's sake, we do see a little more of that. Hopefully we do. Hopefully we do. And as we can see, they still continue to farm up those mats. And... It have they gone into an engagement yet? No, they haven't. With any one player still alive. So just a question for you as well, Aiden. Just because, you know, as I do commentate for now, I haven't played in a very long time, obviously. It's probably been... Uh, I mean, I did play a little bit in the OG season, obviously. I think a lot of people did. Mm -hmm. But before that, I mean, I probably would have last played around, like... 2019 how about you when did you kind of like last play Fortnite, or do you still like play it to this day where where were you where was your era of play oh man i mean i still play it to this day i remember when fortnite first came out i played it a lot i'm kind right. of like what you would call an og player uh however when season x did drop i ended up kind of taking that break not gonna lie i did not like the season but with this new season i actually do like it new animations brand new map i find this map to be very very like landscape and it looks like they are gonna do their first encounter 
Yeah, I don't think yep, the player knows are. exactly at what was going on. So it's just going to be an absolute jumping from St. Clair onto this other player. I mean, you almost... I was going to say you oh. almost feel bad for him, but it's actually going to be K1 that gets quite low. Gets and is actually going to get injured for his findings. And now all of a sudden, was zero low as well. The confirm going through. I mean... Yeah, I honestly, this is not very good. Panic Zero, I was right about that. Actually getting oh, wow. finished off as well. What was that? That was just absolutely amazing from Such Figu. Oh, yeah. I mean, he just uh, he just absolutely wiped the Saints off of the planet there. For sure. That was a very, very, very quick second game, to be honest. They what, had the first play? shot as well. Yeah. They had the first shot on the player, and he somehow comes back, knocks down K1, yeah. is able to farm that loot, doesn't even need to have the heals. I mean... Whoever Figu is, yeah, I don't know what he is. Absolutely cracked, man. That was that was amazing to watch. That was awesome. Totally oh, yeah. unexpected as well. Uh, but as we do wait for a couple of those games to come back, we will be throwing it to a break shortly. So we will be back with you guys very soon.
Welcome back, Saints Nation. We are back now with some TFT. We saw Tommy, a.k.a. Naku Taiken, finishing at second place last game. And look at that. It is actually going to be Pitsy in the same lobby as us. So, <laughs> might come down to a little bit of team killing, of course. Pitsy is one of the uh, best TFT players on in North America right now. He is top rated even amongst some pro players. So, it should be... I can, and, and barring a massive upset, we saw he was on the first on the leaderboard by a landslide as well. Yeah. This should be Pitsy finishing in first. Anything else would be an extreme upset to me, unless a name I'm not aware of is, in fact, just as good or better than him. For sure, yeah. So, but I doubt uh, that. Yeah, I mean, well, well, you know what? You never know. You never know. Anything could happen. It is esports for a reason. So, it's going to be interesting to see, though... Uh, Obviously, you really don't like to see that we are in the game with another Saints player because it does mean that we also have to go up against them as well. Exactly, yeah. But it's going to be a little bit interesting. We'll see maybe in the Pitsy versus Tommy war. Maybe Tommy, you know, gets a little upset. Maybe gets one engagement out of, like, the five that'll probably go up against Pitsy for. So, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. But, you know, who knows? Maybe Pitsy will be kind. Maybe if it comes down to Tommy versus Pitsy, maybe Pitsy... Will you know like to give him the win? Probably not. He probably, probably not. wants to I keep think, his yeah. first place finish at the end of the day, uh, first place on that leaderboard. Because he did have he did have a big lead as well. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure, sure he, he did, was yeah. leading by like a little more than 20 points. Yeah. And then the drop down from second to third was like another 20 points. Yeah, it was. So, it is. A, it is a drastic drop. Yeah, going to be interesting to see how Pitsy and Tommy play this one out. We are going to be on Tommy's POV though. And again, if you do want to see these streams without the commentary, exclamation mark streams in the chat that will bring up the stream links. So you can go to the streams respect, uh, respective uh, lives. So there you go. First augment stage going through. Going to be interesting to see. And last game, Tommy, we saw him sort of dancing around getting every single synergy that he could honestly read off the board. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it, played into that third-tier jazz. Seems like he's going to go for a second-tier disco. And that might be sort of the start of what he sort of taps into in that early game. We see a couple of players already having, I believe, what is maybe even a tier three on the board already. So getting a little lucky in the shop might help. But so far, we do know what Tommy's going for. And yeah, that is going to actually be someone who has the tier three punk going down. So very Dang. interesting. For sure, for sure, yeah. It looks like he's going with uh, three of them. You got Disco, Dazzler, and I believe that's Guardian. Is that it? Yes. Yes. So we will see how Tommy plays into it, obviously. We saw last game as well, right? I mean, last game, he sort of played this... Uh, this strategy where he would really invest heavily into his back line, it seems like in the mid game, and then late game, he would just try to beef up his front line just to buy his back line uh, units time to deal that massive damage. So you gotta think, you gotta wonder, obviously I can't recall from past performances if that is kind of like Tommy's play style, if that's what he likes to do, or if he's kind of just all around, you know, he takes whatever kind of goes to him. So far, we see that he is actually in second, and we do see, while it may not really come to haunt Pitsy in the very end, Pitsy has lost an engagement early and is down to health right now. But, of course, early game, this will most likely not really matter all that much. We know that Pitsy is a world-class TFT player, and he will most likely be up in that top spot very soon. Yeah, he will, and just like you said earlier with TFT, Anything could happen. Right, I mean, you know, it would be quite uh, the caster curse if we see Pitsy get eliminated uh, early. Of course, really shouldn't happen knowing him. So, as I continue talking about how good Pitsy is, I wonder if, you know, we can just shake things up a little bit. And if Pitsy ends up falling early, <laughs> how much he'll probably hate me for doing this to him right now. For sure, yeah. I'll probably just put it on you as well a little bit, Aiden. You'll take some of that as well. So we'll be both hated together by this one TFT god. <laughs> So 
Tell me just looking at the team planner right now, just kind of thinking about what do you kind of want to build into? What do you want? And uh, so far, let's look at these synergies. Has anything changed? No, not really. Not just yet. Still playing into that Silver Disco and the two other synergies in the Dazzler and Guardian. He does have a player that he can use for Bruiser. I haven't seen Tommy actually tap into that Bruiser synergy a he lot. Hasn't, no. Uh, I wonder if it's just kind of not his style. If he doesn't really, you know, know how to uh, play into it potentially like too much. Or if he just, you know, doesn't like it. He just hates it. And maybe he just doesn't want to play into it. He is actually going to take a hit as he does remove that Disco Synergy. So no longer Tier 2. But he's going to play into Jazz. And if memory serves me right, Jazz was the Synergy that he played into heavily last game. It was, Did yeah. buy him that second place finish. So nothing bad there. Pretty good signs so far. For Tommy as he starts off pretty hot in the early game. He should get this engagement as well. It is going to look to go the way of Naku Taiken. Yes, it does. And that should be another nice win as Tommy finds himself in first. And Pitsy actually seems like he lost yet another engagement. Is at 96 health now. I really hope we didn't just curse him, by the way. <laughs> I mean, I think it would be kind of fun, you know? Like, who knows? Uh, yeah, as we do see in the Fortnite game, uh, Wait, is this the third yeah, game? it's no, 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 that was just the second game. Okay. Our players did place 29th, remember, after they got absolutely <laughs> obliterated. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. By a default skin. Let's talk about that for a minute, right? They climb on top of this house, they see this default skin guy just mining away at some fences so innocently, right? Yeah. They line up the shots, they're like, hey, we can get this guy on first shot, right? We got the jump on him. This should be an easy wipe. That guy immediately just becomes an absolute demon, outbuilds them, outclasses them, kills both, both of them of without them. popping a single heal. I mean, that was just the funniest thing. I like I apologize to our guys before. It was. That was yeah. the funniest thing I've ever seen. Like uh, if if it was just a little bit of troll than we do around here, it's all good. But I mean that player was just absolutely cracked out of his mind. I think his name was like Figu something. Well anyway that guy's incredible. I really hope that we just see him on the top of that board after. If he does end up winning, I would not be very surprised. That was a brilliant play. It was. But it didn't seem like he had a teammate. So, uh, at least I in the I th area. I think he... I think his teammate was behind him. There was two of them. I saw that for sure. Okay. Although, I think that default demon kind of just took out both of them. Right. Yeah. Like, it just didn't it was even just, seem to have an effect. It yeah. was just, we were looking through the eyes of Figu, and he was just absolutely going crazy. But, back on the TFT. Tommy's going to find himself at level 5, so now putting 5 units on the board is an option for him to play into. Seems like he's going to put a 6th thing on the board as well. And playing in to that second tier Jazz Synergy, I do believe, unless I'm mistaken. I think he's just kind of looking around the board right now, seeing what other people have laid out. Yep. Yeah, it seems like he's going to be looking to play into that Jazz Synergy once again with the Big, big shot, shot Synergy going down as well. However, as he goes up against his opponent, and it looks like that he is going to have a little bit of trouble in the front lines. But can his backline activate fast enough in order to make the difference? It would appear most likely not, as they no. are going to get cut down. And that is unfortunate for Tommy. Oh, wow. So I'm getting word that the Fortnite game that we actually did go into was the third game. So they just had two back-to-back -back 29th place finishes. That's not good. And yeah. I believe that that was actually the last Fortnite game of the night. So this is going to be also the last TFT game of the night. And if we look on the leaderboard right now, I mean, there we go. Naku Taiken with 87 health on the board. And Pitsy is slowly but surely climbing that leaderboard. However, I believe uh, the person in first right now, sitting at 100 health, absolutely streaking. Probably the best start you could have to a game. And Tommy just building up a little bit of econ. 31 in the tank. you got to think right now, 
if he's trying to go for like maybe some items, how does he want to spend that econ selling back some units to just build it? He has 37 in the tank now, using two to grab another unit, selling another one back, I believe. Yep, exactly. That's going to be exactly what he's doing. So it's just going to be the uh, bruiser synergy that we are actually going to see Tommy go into a little bit as we do see on our right side loki i believe has entered that sixth level and tommy has as well yeah so now being able to put six units on the board is a beautiful start for naku taiken and right now we are going to see if he can win this next engagement for the player who is i believe yes in third place currently Frontline seems that it's holding up okay, but as that damage starts to come in, it is going to actually crumble. The backline should be next very soon, and this is an engagement that you would think is not going to go in the favor of Naku Taiken. I think what he needs to do is build up his frontline, especially what he did last game as well. Right, well, I mean, you gotta think, he might just be investing heavily into that backline he right could, now. Yeah, yeah just so he can have that early and then late like late mid game to late game he might then start to bolster that front line up a little bit for sure but yeah. we'll see that i mean that's what he did last time you know who knows we don't know what tommy's thinking we're not on his stream right now but if you want to be on his stream then you can use exclamation streams in the chat to go there if you don't want to hear the commentary 48 economy right now for tommy as well sitting on level six comfortably and if we take a look across the board, Pitsy is going to find himself all the way back in first. And I believe with a hundred... Is that more than a hundred health? Does Pitsy have a hundred and eight health? It looks like a hundred and eight, It yes. looks like Pitsy has a hundred and eight health. I have no idea how he pulled that off. But if that is true, then Pitsy... I mean, you're you're amazing, and you're really good. And if we saw you leave early and hate me and Aiden forever, that would have been kind of funny. I won't lie, but <laughs> I, I'm glad it's not happening. So, I mean, you're really you're really uh, showing everyone what you're made of now, and going into that first place spot, not too alarming to see. For sure. And it looks like Tommy did lose his, lose this encounter, dropping his health down to 65. Right, I mean, you gotta think right now, with Pitsy in the lobby as well, as Pitsy's health will drop now down to 97, I wonder if that was just a little bit of a buff he had, like a health buff he had, uh, like, for the time being. He probably did, yeah. He probably did, yeah, just because you're not usually able to go over 100, no one starts with over 100 health, obviously, so putting two and two together, you could kind of assume that was going what was going on, Yeah. but nevertheless, he still finds himself in first place now with 97 health. And you just got to think, with Tommy it's sitting at 65, this might just be an absolutely crazy hard lobby right now that we're in. Of course, no lobby is going to be easy, especially when you have Pitsy in it. You can just assume that the first place is going to be taken up by him. So, wins for Tommy right now. And barring an absolute miracle, probably out of the question. But it's just going to see, maybe, can Tommy maybe secure himself a top five finish? If he can just overtake Loki, that's not going to happen and as the five win streak no. goes through. And Tommy's going to lose even more health. Not looking too good for the side of Naku Taiken. But if we do look at Pitsy, still sitting strong, is in third place now at 86 health. Going to see, be interesting to see how Pitsy ends up finishing out this game. Here we are on the carousel. I wonder if he's mainly going for a character or mainly going for the items. Well, right now, if I were to make the assumption, uh, you're sitting at 54 health right now. Yeah. You have that Jazz at third level synergy, the big shot as well, sitting on one. It is a hard call because you could put a really good item in your back line to help out. Yeah. Or you could get a really good unit to bolster your front line if it's really worth the wait. With it being kind of early in the game still, though, I don't think that those more, like, expensive or really insane units are going to be lurking on the carousel. At least, you know, it's it's hard, right? So it's going to be interesting to see what Tommy does. He is going to go to level 7, so he can put another unit on that board, most likely just to bolster the front line. That's going to be exactly yep. what happens. And he is going to attach that unit, I believe, or that item to that front line unit as well. 
Interesting to see here as we face up against July, uh, Jelly or July, I think, or Jolly, one of the three. Anyway, the whole point <laughs> is that the, he needs to win this right now. Tommy, this is a huge fight. Can you overtake this person just to kind of uh, keep yourself in the game, maybe round out a top six finish? Maybe doable? I mean, depending on a couple of wins, you string a couple of wins together and maybe a Jay Walker takes a couple of hits. But no, it's going to be Tommy to get the blunt of the damage. And now he has 49 health, looking like a slow, but, uh, you know, building fall off for Tommy. And wow, if we look at the leaderboard, we are definitely mistaken. Pitsy's at 77 health right now. He is not looking too hot in terms of getting into that first place but if it's anyone who we know could do it and make the comeback it is it's going good, to be yeah. him so sure. we will see kind of how that wraps up what by the time tommy goes out or if he goes out i should say because anything still can happen it will be interesting to see where pitsy is on that leaderboard if he can climb back up a couple spots but in the long scheme of things, I don't think that an early exit for Pitsy, most likely being kind of a top four exit because he's just that good, calling that an early exit. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I want to see really how next week when we do look at that leaderboard, how it will hinder him. But with the vast uh, point drop that is between first and second place, I don't believe that he will have too big of a problem as we do see Tommy actually taking down Pitsy. Uh and is going to knock Pitsy down to 70 health. Not the best yeah, scenario I'm, I'm there sure because... I have, I'm not sure if that would be like a good thing or a bad thing to be Well, honest. you know, the thing is you have to play for the actual game, obviously. Yeah. You, you can't just play to boost a player. That would be cheating or, you know, like, bias. So they, they can't do that. They have to fight and they have to try to win with all the best they can. Tommy's showing that he has the better of Pitsy on that engagement. And, you know what? Screw it. He won one. So that okay. was unexpected uh, against Pitsy, but... Hey, it works out, and I'm sure Tommy is feeling great about that, getting the one-up on his teammate. But in the long run, it isn't a great move because now Pitsy gets knocked down health by Tommy, a player who is probably going to see an exit sometime soon, only yeah. sitting on 49 health, not looking the best in terms of health pool right now, especially when compared to the others. It seems like we have our... Sixth place players currently sitting at 58. So a little bit of a health drop off, but you know, in between you know, one or two battles, it isn't that big of a difference, but it will be a difference. It will be a big difference soon if Tommy cannot start putting a couple of engagements together and winning a couple of these battles. It's going to be the front line doing a very good job, though, and they are going to start cranking out onto the enemy's front line. They have the kills. They have the picks. Now they can focus on that back line. This should be a Tommy win, it and is. it is going to be exactly just that. And there you go. He's going to be able to find himself now in sixth place, and that is perfect. And actually fifth as well now as two players drop below him. So a very decent hold from Tommy. And you know what? From how this round and how this game was looking, top five would be an absolute dream right now for Nakutaiken. For sure, it definitely would be. And it looks like... Selecting the Augment. Yeah. So as Tommy picks up that Augment as well, Augments are just kind of like more buffs, right? Like, you know, they're, they're kind of just a phase where you get to select one. And depending on what your lineup kind of looks like, you could kind of bolster the abilities and sort of the effects that they do have. Mm -hmm. So that is what you want to do. And now Tommy getting to level 7 as well. Being able to put that 7th unit on the board is a massive upgrade for him. So we will see just what he does there. And as you can see, Tommy is running definitely more than two of the synergies again yeah i mean we saw it, it looks like he's doing the same exact thing as last time running the third tier jazz and then basically just going back on super fan kda big shot guardian sentinel and true damage as his other synergies to work with so we will see what tommy can muster up here it is looking like an absolute domination so far. This player probably having a very strong back line. And yeah, that's going to be exactly what they are trying to do. Almost trying to replicate Tommy's build. But it is going to be Tommy that or uh, that finds himself winning on this engagement. 
And you know what? He streaked together a couple of wins for himself. He's looking pretty good. And might I add, Pitsy is at 58 health right now. So Pitsy not having the greatest game. Wonder if he's just kind of had a bad day at the shop. Maybe not finding what he wants. Maybe not building into the synergies that he's best with. But either way, this is a very surprising result. It is, to be honest. And I believe that's the second or third encounter that he's actually lost in a row. Mm-hmm. So who knows? Aiden, maybe we're just caster, you know, cursing Pitsy to the highest degree here. But honestly, and this might sound a little weird... I think it's fun. I think that it's great when you cast or curse something because it just leads to funny moments. I mean, I certainly didn't expect Pitsy to be sitting at fourth place at this stage of the TFT game. We are probably about to see some exits coming out soon as we do have a player now at 27 and 29 health, respectively, as the bottom two. Yep. So players will start to exit this game soon. And if you are those players on the bottom, it's only a matter of time unless you can uh, spin some streaks together. And honestly, it's looking like it might be a matter of time for Tommy as he has a very rough time in that engagement and he is going to find himself down to 37 health. Yeah, it's not looking too good. Back to the carousel again. Hopefully he looks like he's going towards items as well. Or maybe a character. Well, only time will tell, but it seems like so far that what we do know is that Tommy is going for the exact same lineup sort of that he was going for last game. Let's look at, the, look at the uh, leaderboard right now. Pitsy at 47 health. He took yet another loss. And, uh, I mean, honestly, I think it's done. I think we've done our job here. I think the caster <laughs> curse has been officially applied. But maybe we can reverse Caster Curse. Maybe we can just, you know, play a little bit of Uno Reversal. And maybe if we just talk about how bad uh, everything is going, that maybe stuff will be good. Maybe good stuff will happen. Who knows? For Tommy right now, it's not looking too bright, though, obviously. We do have the POV of Tommy on right now. So, you know, you hope that he kind of still lasts longer. But... It's looking like a really high drop-off. I mean, just look at the difference between the players in first and second. 85 health to 58. I mean, yes, Pitsy is technically at 47 health, but if you think about it, he is really only one or two fights away from being in that second place spot. He is, so, yeah. you know, it could still be a strong finish for Pitsy, but it seems like the winner of this game has pretty much already been decided. Second I say that, though, notice how two engagements lost in a row. It's going to be Velocity, I believe, in the top. Was at 85 health. Now is at 71. So whenever I speak good things about people, <laughs> bad things tend to happen. And just piggybacking off of that, looks like Tommy did end up winning that encounter as well. I think moving up one spot, I believe, or did he stay the same? I believe he stayed the no, same. No, I... B uh, yeah, I don't actually remember. I think if memory does serve me right, I think he stayed. But maybe Charlie was right above him. I don't quite know. No, I don't think he actually moved right, because Pitsy was literally right above him. Yeah. So that is going to be what happens. And who are we going up against right now? It seems like we're going up against the player in third place right now, sitting at third, 47. This is an absolutely huge fight. Because if Tommy can win right now, he can help Pitsy climb this lineup as well, assuming Pitsy wins his fight. We'll see, though, as, you know, nothing has really been assumed here. This has been a crazy matchup. It has been, yes. It's looking like a little bit of a really tough one uh, on the side of Tommy. I don't think it's going to quite happen. That is going to be a lot of health lost. It is going to be Tommy now down to 28 HP. But there you go. Pitsy wins his fight, and he jumps all the way up from second. fourth to second place. So hopefully a good setup from the Saints here. And now we are seeing some of these players get very, very low. You have to assume with the player in the bottom at, I believe, 8 health, and the other player in Jolly at 18, it's just not looking too good for them. Probably going to be an exit very soon. Hopefully right now, if you're Tommy, that you can maybe secure a top four finish. It is still in the books here as Loki is only on 34 health as he does sit 
in that fourth place. So only one fight away from being able to get into that fourth place spot is Tommy. It is really kind of cutthroat right now. And these next couple of fights are really going to determine what a lot of this placing is going to look like in the long term. For sure. And it does look like Presley and the fellow in third are actually tied for second, I believe. Both with 47 health. Yes, so to so yeah, if you can just get above Loki and get in that fourth place, you know, you have a little bit of a battle going on between Pitsy and uh, the player from, I believe, UMT, if I'm not mistaken. Apologies if I am. But for Tommy, two we are caring about who we are following. This front line seems to be taking a lot of damage, but as the units do move up forward, the tentacles just applying a little more. But whoa, an absolute whoa, what? It was just going back and forth. I thought I thought Tommy's front line was looking very poor. They all of a sudden and evaporated. Around, yeah. But he turns it around, taking off 10 health from Pitsy again, winning the engagement. In doing so, knocking our fellow player down the leaderboard with him. So now Pitsy sitting in third on 33 health and even Velocity down at 56. I mean, honestly, it was looking like such a uh, secure matchup. But you know what? If Velocity just loses a couple more games as he has lost that streak, who knows? This could be a little bit of a comeback from behind. It could be, yeah. And I could definitely see one of our Saints players ending at that second place spot. Maybe it, pulling it, that upset, maybe getting first. It very well could be. As I say that, though, it appears that I have not learned my lesson because as I talk good about our Saints, obviously bad things tend to follow if the trend does seem right. But I don't care. I'm going to support my boys. And that is going to be exactly the same thing that happens again. I talk about a St. Clair comeback, and Tommy's lineup gets absolutely wiped. So now Tommy is going to find himself on 21 health, staring down the barrel of a soon-to-be-eliminated uh, shot. And right now, if you're Tommy... It's not looking good, especially after taking that damage yet again, now down to 11 health. You really don't have much you can rely on. Pitsy, on the other hand, if we're talking about good things, has come up to second place. We'll see by me mentioning that if he does fall even lower. Yeah, for sure. He did win that last encounter. Yeah, unfortunately, with Tommy losing that, he did drop down to 11 health, which is getting him into, what is that, 2, 4, 6, 7th place? Eighth place. Uh, sixth, sixth. Sixth place, sorry So, about yeah, he is going to be in sixth right now. But if Tommy can just string a couple wins together, maybe get a top five finish, you know, maybe it'll happen. But this is going to be most likely almost it for Tommy. He could very well see himself being eliminated in this fight. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens here. However, I do believe that his front line is kind of crumbling, but the back line is standing pretty nicely. They are doing a little yeah, more does, damage, but it is going to be a chance, back line yeah. versus back line. They're going to take out the first unit. Second one should yep. fall. Tommy fighting uh, and living to fight another day. And moving wow, up moving up to fourth. I mean, that is absolutely amazing. I did not expect, I thought Tommy was most likely going to be gone right now. And this is going to be a very important carousel for Tommy is going to be able to pick third, able to probably get what he most likely wants. Mm -hmm. And right now, this next fight is going to be absolutely massive. Because if Tommy can just eliminate someone right above or below him, he will secure that top five finish. For sure, yeah. I believe the next encounter will be a uh, the like the final decision for that. <laughs> We will see. Tommy, I believe, going all out on the economy now, getting to level 8, just so we can have that 8th unit on the board, putting some tentacles down, just as some damage sponges that can also deal damage just for him and burn time. And it's going to come all down to this. It is going to be Loki who he's up against. So, this is a huge fight. If Tommy can win this, he will end up eliminating Loki more than likely. But if he loses, it's a lot of chunk health down, and Tommy might even be left on about 1 HP by the end of it. 
an absolutely massive unit just absolutely taking out the back line. This is not looking good for yeah, Tommy. Unfor yeah. And unfortunately, as the front line does fall, Pitsy watching what should be these final moments of his friend. And whoa, actually, oh wow. Drop down to two. Drop down to two health. I believe Pitsy did take a little bit of damage as well. He did, yes. And as I believe he is still in combat, Pitsy might fall here we don't know actually i believe he am i reading that is he at 10 or 18 right now it i think he's at 18. 18 so a couple of more engagements but for tommy he is truly on his last uh life his last line however if tommy can just win this last fight he could hopefully maintain a top five finish but as he does go up against the player who is Ali, I believe, is in, in second, second right yeah. now. Yeah, it's not looking good. And, and that is going to be Tommy taking an exit. He will yep. finish in that sixth place. Pitsy, however, does win his encounter and does stay in third. Well, he'll live to fight another day, but as it goes for Tommy, that will be the elimination and he will be gone finishing in sixth place. I believe he is actually going to stick around and just watch Pitsy's POV. So if you want to see that, you can definitely go exclamation mark streams in the chat and look at that for now. And who knows, you know, we might honestly, with how this game is going, might just stick on Pitsy's POV and see what he ends up doing. Let's look at the synergies that Pitsy's playing into again. Seems like it's kind of the same thing that Tommy's going for, except he has Ill Beats Active has that second tier Jazz, EDM, Big Shot Bruiser, Crowd Diver, and Rapid Fire on the table. Does have a variety just like Tommy did. Right, and now onto the planning stage. We're going to see now what Pitsy has in store. He has secured a top four finish, and with the nature of what this has been looking like so far, he should be in the top three. So pretty solid finish for Pitsy. Obviously, you know, coming into this, I thought probably a first place finish was going to be looking most likely. But sure, yeah. third place should not be too bad. And honestly, I do not think that he will uh, lose too many points in that standing. Uh, or at least too much of a difference in points in that standing. Third place is still brilliant. So you are still going to gain those points, obviously. Hopefully, whoever was second on the leaderboard... Maybe take an early exit. Maybe not able to get that climb. Yeah. Or at least make it as close uh, as possible. But as Pitsy goes into this lineup, it is going to be the focus and damage onto him. He is going to drop to Jump two health. Fourth. And right now, it seems like Pitsy might even end up finishing in fourth place. Tommy not leaving the lobby yet. He is just going to be content on watching Pitsy's POV. He most likely knows that we are on his POV right now. Anyway, so might as well stay in this lobby for a little bit longer as we just wait for Pitsy to either win the game or get eliminated. Here we go. This is most likely going to be it. It but could be the final Pitsy encounter, yeah. could maybe secure a top three finish, and that would definitely be nice. And it is going to be against Velocity. So the player in second right now, could be a huge battle. Let's see as Pitsy's lineup in the top, how it does. It seems like they're moving up the board right like now. So it well, looks yeah. like as to start, it is looking pretty decent. As the damage comes through though, it seems like there's a little bit of backfire now onto Pitsy's lineup. Oh. It is going to be Pitsy taking the damage and that will be all she wrote for St. Clair's TFT lineup. So we got Pitsy finishing in fourth, Tommy finishing in sixth there, but Tommy did finish in, I believe, oh man, was it second? It did he second finish place, second, yeah. place? second place? Yeah, first though, game. Yeah. So decent showing there from Naku Taiken and hopefully the rest of the St. Clair roster. We didn't get into a match with Kira, so we don't know how he did yeah. or, or how they did, and we didn't get into a match with Prince, so we don't know how they did either. Yeah. So, But it's okay. We will check that out on the leaderboards after next week when we come back here, 
And in terms of our show for tonight, that's going to be it for now. I want to give a special shout out to the people in the back room. We cannot do these streams without you. You guys could mute my mic, turn the cameras off whenever you wanted, but you didn't end up doing that. So thank you to Matthias and I believe is also Amanda and Dan in the back room. Yeah. And uh, as far as it goes from us, we want to also thank our sponsors in HyperX, uh, Subway, Tim Hortons, the SRC, and the St. Clair alumni. Mm. So thank you guys for being sponsors. Thank you to all the viewers at home for watching this showing of Saints game day. Thank you, Aiden, for joining me on the desk. You know, as for a first cast, how do you, how do you, you know, how did you enjoy it? Oh, yeah, it was fun. I loved it, to be honest. Really? Yeah, and you know, hopefully next week when we do have some Rainbow Six Siege, for those who don't know, everyone knows that Siege is my favorite game to cast. But Aiden absolutely loves Siege as well, and he loves to, he'd probably love to get on the mic for some Siege as well. Oh, so yeah, I'd love to. It's going to be a dynamic duo when we return next Thursday and hopefully have that Siege starting at uh, 7 p.m. as it usually would. Yeah. But, for now, that is going to be all for today. Tune in tomorrow as we do have another stream happening later on in the evening. But for now, it's been Patrick Smoke Chambers and Aiden Silent Ghost of Mers. And we will see you guys later.